Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Zombie Train. This is episode 270, and I'm your host, Ellis, otherwise known as Train Man. Today, we return to a uh, great, uh, like, forward progress on the actual map. Whereas last week, we sort of did a lot of sporadic things, but you can see more about that in the actual episode of Under Construction, which will come out with this video. Now, the question this week was asked by Ryan Lobner back on episode 221. Zombie Train 221, the full text of which is as follows. Um, come on, please. Uh, also, what did you all do with Negaplate 587? Um, sorry, did I say 765? I meant 587. Negaplate 587. So, as many people watching this know, uh, every 15 years before the war, every 15 years, uh, the upper ray mandated that a steam engine be taken down for mandatory inspection and rebuild, or 1,472 operating days, if I recall correctly, uh, whichever came sooner. Now, some people might also know that 587 had a pretty prolific career in the, uh, you know, after transitionary, in the, in the preservation era uh, before the war. And the... Um, the engine was wearing a bit thin by the time it came in for its rebuild, I think around, you know, middle of the two, middle of the, there's a word for it, the, the 2000s, uh, the double O's, and we didn't really realize what all was wrong with the engine, you know, we sort of, we came upon the ITM and it was like, oh, they've got a bunch of things, but they've got this engine in particular, which we know, like I said, has had a prolific excursion career, is a very good engine, as far as we knew. Um, and even though it's had a couple of weird, uh, you know, it's had a couple of weird things, like it's a, it's a Baldwin engine with Lima cylinders, and it's got, you know, it's sort of a Franken engine because it's had such a long career. But, um, it, it has a lot of things that slowly went wrong with it that we didn't really know about until later. And some of these things, which we found in, in correspondence and notes from the ITM, some of these things they knew about, and that's why the restoration was taking as long as it did, but, um, the, uh, the, you know, the full extent of everything that was wrong with it was not totally known. So, we get in there, and we expect this to be a pretty simple, okay, make sure nothing's broken and piece the engine back together. We thought it was going to be, you know, a level 2, where, or, or, or really a level 1, I guess, because if level 0 is engines that are already running, level 1 is engines that, no, level 1, level, okay, I came up with this sort of system last time we were talking. It's basically a, a reflection of the system that we were using back, uh, you know, back at the very beginning of the Zombie Train Incorporated, but there was the first level, which was engines that are running. And then there's the second level, which is engines that we had to do some minor, minor stuff to, and they could run. So this would be uh, a level two, because first level was level zero, it's already running. Level one is we just need to do some minor fixes or modifications, like fix, uh, or change, do a conversion from oil to coal, or something like that. This would be a level two, we had to put it back together. Um... And again, we thought the problem was, oh, it needs to get put back together, but we got into doing that, and this engine was in about a thousand pieces. So we, if I can remember where this museum is exactly, you know, obviously, Indiana Transportation Museum in Indiana, not necessarily in the best place for safety's sake out in Indiana, but... We started trying to do a lot of work there because we sort of deemed that it was in too many pieces to, to take anywhere. So, we started doing a lot of the work there. We had to bail out of the place a couple of times. Again, thought this was going to be easy, and was not. Now, I don't even have records on what, what else was in there. I can't remember what else was in there either, so I can't really talk about all of it. But... 
Oh, something I do remember. I'm looking at the map now, and it's reminding me of something stupid that happened nearby. Uh, but... Anyway, I digress. Uh, we, did, we deemed that the engine was in too many pieces. Good thing we did that, because... One of the times that we came back, we had a different crew. Uh, you know, the, we had to bail on the place, then we had to come back, then we had to bail again... And meanwhile, those people got sent off to, um, I don't know, God knows where, probably Strasbourg or some other locomotive shop, maybe Cheyenne, uh, because it was about that time. And so they, you know, we had a new group of people coming in, and, and that's that should give you an idea of how long it actually took to do all of this. Uh... Because it was it was slow. It was pretty slow. So we're getting it all together. And the There it is. No, that's not it, is it? No, ITM, IRM. No. Uh Oh god, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say a whole bunch of things. Uh they finally noticed that a bunch of things were wrong with the engine. We thought we just had to slap it together. We couldn't do that because there was... It needed, like, a new firebox. It needed, uh, like, new... What were they? Uh, like, dry pipes. You know, the, the pipes that go to the cylinders. Uh, it needed a bunch of new flues, if I recall correctly. Um, oh, and it needed a tube sheet. That's what it was. It wasn't the flues. It was... They actually needed to make a new tube sheet. Now, this, uh, like, no, it did need new tubes, too, didn't it? I don't know. It needed a lot. Basically, it went from, okay, we're putting this engine together, to this went from a level 2 to a level 3. We need new parts for this engine. And so, then we started sourcing parts and sending them to the ITM. Uh, or, you know, in Ravina, Kentucky. Uh, not, not Kentucky. Not Ravina, Kentucky. What the hell? No. The ITM is not in Ravina, Kentucky. Uh, it's in Noblesville, Indiana. Sorry. Uh, different place. Didn't I talk about what was in Ravina not too long ago? Whatever. It's it's out there. So, the... Uh, we started sending them... We started sending stuff out to Noblesville. And that was kind of a proposition, because out there, stuff is a little bit tricky. You know, some of the lines don't really go exactly where you'd want them to go, or hope they would go, uh, or, or really expect them to go sometimes. And some of them, you know, they were either torn up for, you know, for salvage, or there were fires, and they burned out ties, or little bridges, or whatever. There's just a huge network, you know, you're you're almost, when you're out there, you're almost stifled by possibility. And so we were routing a train with parts from, was it Kentucky? It was Kentucky. Maybe that's why I'm thinking Kentucky. Up, I don't remember what, I don't remember exactly where it came from, but someplace down there. Uh, up through Cincinnati, which was a dangerous proposition, but we couldn't go through Louisville because Louisville was having some issues at that moment. Uh, Louisville, we had just evacuated a bunch of people from. It was getting overrun, and honestly, we just deemed it way too dangerous because it had collected a ton of zombies. And I remember that operation pretty vividly because it was a huge, huge event getting all of those people out of that city because, amazingly enough, Louisville... Kentucky had one of the largest surviving urban populations that we had seen. And now that's not a huge number. It was just a it was a couple thousand people, but a couple thousand people is pretty significant. And these guys had you know, they didn't really design like a like a section of the city or whatever. They were mostly just scavengers. And so they were surviving in the city mostly it it seemed by sheer luck because the zombies had all chased off other people. They'd all gone elsewhere. They were, you know, they were mostly to the south at that point in time, and then they sort of all came up 
and so we started getting reports of this huge wave of zombies, and so we had no choice but to set a ton of trains in there to evac, because we didn't have the resources to fight that many. So we held them down in Louisville after we evacuated people, and we were routing trains that were coming from the south in that general direction. Again, we're a little ways into the zombie train incorporated here to the point where we've got a bunch of trains moving around um, through Cincinnati. And, again, da a little bit of a dangerous proposition, but we had enough sort of... We had enough of a contingent there that it wasn't as much of an issue as you might think going through a huge area like that. There was also a, a pretty good-sized yard, so we were using it to interchange. There were a couple things around there where we had to do some janky stuff. The first was we had to route... Okay, so that's right. So I'm, I'm trying to remember the individual things that actually transpired when it came to this. Train got into Cincinnati from the south, ended up not having enough fuel to do what we needed it to do. So then it had to wait, I believe, we had to get another engine, or we had to bring in a train with coal and load it on. I think, I think we did, okay, I think we did end up swapping engines. I read the, like, after action report from this mess. And, yeah, so train rolls into wherever I said. Train train rolls into uh, Cincinnati. And they stop in Cincinnati, which usually is, no, 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 don't do that. But they had to because they were going to run out of fuel. Um, and I don't know how it got to that point, but it got to that point. So they get another engine in there. This engine comes in from the north. Obviously, we have a way to turn engines around, but there was a reason that this had to be expedited. And I think it may have had something to do with problems, again, with that, uh, with, you know, the museum being in a fairly dangerous location. So, we had to get a train out to Indianapolis that would get onto the tracks that head up to Noblesville. So, we sent the train out. Again, I wasn't here for this. I just read the after-action report. We sent this train out with a new engine, with a different engine, because, uh, you know, because it wasn't the biggest, or because we were trying to expedite it, we didn't feel like turning the engine around and fueling it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it, you know, it hits the rails, it gets going, it heads out, instead of going the long way, instead of going north, because it was not facing the right way and we didn't feel like turning it around, apparently, uh, instead of going the long way in the Indiana subdivision, it goes on the central railroad of Indiana. And there's a section in the middle there, this is what I learned, they were using this track before with this lighter, smaller engine, which was, I think, like a Mikado, but this, uh, this larger engine ended up getting stuck on a section of the Central Road of Indiana, which was not receiving maintenance. It was near, like, Shelbyville or something. But before the war, it was not receiving maintenance. I'm trying to... I'm trying to, to pull up everything as quickly as I can, because I actually wanted to sort of talk about this. Uh, wait, which, which... Which state am I in? Whatever, I can't see. Is that Kentucky? No, that's, that's Indiana. Uh... I'm about to go over time, huh? Oh, I have like a minute. Okay, so Shelbyville, Indiana. Yeah. It's south of there that there was like no maintenance being done on the stretch of rail. And this combined with some fairly heavy rains meant that the train got stuck due to... I think it spread the gauge or something because the you know, stuff had loosened. Uh... You know, the ties had rotted to the point where they really weren't holding anything, and then, you know, pretty hefty rain came through and, you know, shook the track up a little bit, I guess. Just, you know, combine everything, the lack of maintenance, the weather, the heavier train, and then it got stuck out there, and then the train got ambushed. And I think only a couple of people actually made it out from that, so, 
Yeah, check your maps first, and uh, don't do things with haste. Train men out.